Good morning. Welcome to the live broadcast of our digital worship at Oak Lawn United Methodist Church. Keep your eye on that timer. When it's done, we'll begin worship. In the meantime, grab your coffee and ready your worship space. You can also check out our digital bulletin at www.olumc.org slash worship. Thanks for being with us this morning. We'll get started momentarily. broadcast of our digital worship at Oak Lawn United Methodist Church. Keep your eye on that timer. When it's done, we'll begin worship. In the meantime, grab your coffee and ready your worship space. You can also check out our digital bulletin at www.olumc.org slash worship. Thanks for being with us this morning. We'll get started momentarily. broadcast of our digital worship at Oak Lawn United Methodist Church. Keep your eye on that timer. When it's done, we'll begin worship. In the meantime, grab your coffee and ready your worship space. You can also check out our digital bulletin at www.olumc.org slash worship. Thanks for being with us this morning. We'll get started momentarily. Grab your coffee and ready your worship space. You can also check out our digital bulletin at www.olumc.org slash worship. Thanks for being with us this morning. We'll get started momentarily.
Good morning. I'm Reverend Rachel Bachman, and I want to welcome you this morning to worship with Oak Lawn United Methodist Church. It's important that you know that you're welcome here no matter who you are or who you love. We want this to be a place where you can feel comfortable. We want this to be a place where you are also challenged. But most of all, we want this to be a place that you know that you are loved. We begin every um, every worship service and study that we do um, together by saying this preamble. So I invite you to, with the words on the screen, um, say these words along with me. We at Oak Lawn United Methodist Church believe that everyone deserves to be loved, heard, affirmed, and respected. We at Oak Lawn UMC believe that as a church, it is possible to offer this to one another when we listen, learn, appreciate diversity, and love God above all else and our neighbor as ourselves. Therefore, as individual parts of the church, we pledge to move towards this corporate reality so that the church can be a voice for the voiceless, a home for the wanderer, a respite for the weary, a balm for the hurting, and God's presence in the world. Friends, I'm so glad you're with us today. And if this is your first time, or if you're a visitor with us, we wanna invite you to fill out the Connect card. The link will be here in the comments. And so um, click on that link and fill out a Connect card so that we can engage you and find more ways to, um, to help you be connected within the community. I also wanna invite those of you who are considering um, joining with this family of faith, this uh, wonderful family of Oak Lawn, to join us for a membership class after the service today. It'll be a Zoom call and there'll be um, links there and reminders at the end of the service. So I hope that you'll join us and, and hear more about what Oak Lawn is up to in the world in our mission and ministry. Today is a special day that we get to um, have the blessing of hearing from our very own pastor of our Gracia Viva congregation, uh, Reverend Isabel Marquez. And so I invite you to open your minds and your hearts as you prepare for worship today. Thank you for being with us. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. Jesus, you are brother and friend. Call us by name, Lord. We long to be with you. Jesus, you are redeemer and healer. 
Restore us according to your perfection. Fill our hearts with trust, joy, and hope. Jesus, you are rabbi. Teach us, Lord. Your miracles are a wonder to behold. They shock our senses and challenge our logic. The I am in flesh. Send us, Lord, in these miraculous bodies we are given, embolden us to spread your word and do your work in the world.
Oh my god, I just sang. Our scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Listen for the word of God. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and he came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and he followed him on the way. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Alkaline. Let us pray together. Dear God, we hear. We're here because we loved you and we are grateful that we can worship together as one body. I ask you today to bless each person that is going to listen to this message and to let us be doers of your word, not just listeners. This is an invitation, God, for all of us to let ourselves be transformed. So prepare us for this day. Amen. Uh, a few days ago, I was watching a documentary on TV that it was about the driving blind spots. These are the spaces that not even the best driver can be able to see and that is the cause for so many accidents. And this is because while you have a windshield that is letting you see everything in the front, and you have a, a mirror that is letting you see everything that is happening in the back, and just you have two other mirrors, one at the driver's side and one of the passenger side that is letting you see everything that is happening around the car, there is a space right there by the middle of your car that you cannot see. And the only way to avoid accidents is by the driver taking action and actually turning to the sides to be able to then make a move safely. And when I was thinking about this uh, scripture today, which is one of my favorite ones because I relate to Bartimaeus. Some years ago, I was declared blind, and while I was not totally blind because I was able to see some shadows and some uh, blurry, you know, stuff, um, I was depending on others to walk, to read for me, to drive for me, and I was not independent. And I was feeling probably like on this scripture, you know, like depending on others to be able to survive. And that's the way that I see Bartimaeus here in this story. And I love that Mark is taking the time to name him. Okay, because we hear this story in three gospels and Mark is the only one who give a name to this person. And He's saying that it is Bartimaeus. A bar translated into our language is son, and he is the son of Timaeus, as we read. So Bartimaeus is son of Timaeus. So we don't know if that is a <laughs> what is the meaning of the name, or if you know that is the name. But at least we know who he is, and that is important for me, because no one should be remembered or no one shall be identified 
by a circumstance. So, and when we're driving as a society, if we put ourselves, you know, into this car, which is the society, um, we are driving right together. We buckle up and we're driving. And then we are able to see who is in the front of us, who is doing what, and we decide that we want to follow or not or take another path. You know, we decide because we are able to see the front. And when we see to the back, it's like, okay, look how far I have come. So, but no many times, not many times, I am able to see what is on the sides, especially on that blind spot. And I always think that if as a society, driving together to a one goal is letting us or impossibilitating us to not see the invisible people. And we see right now that many crowds, many people are screaming, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Maybe not on these words, but we know that they are seeking for justice. And God is justice. So when I see Bartimaeus getting closer to Jesus, you know, fighting and, and having struggles to be able to be near God because he was blind and I am sure that he was not, you know, able to do it on his own, but he made it. And then when he's close enough, he starts screaming and shouting and saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And people around him is like, shh, don't bother, don't bother, don't bother right now. You know, silencing him. Because we always, you know, as a society think that some people is not perfect enough to be part of the whole. And many times as a drivers, we are being on the blind spot or we have left someone in this blind spot and today that's why we're taking this opportunity to hear this gospel with our hearts instead of just listening is to putting ourselves into Bartimaeus shoes and putting ourselves into the story so we can see this story with an other eyes we see this man that is struggling, getting near Jesus, and one is there, he's shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People is hushing him. And then he started screaming even louder and saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the driver, which in this case is Jesus Christ, turned around and he was able to see the blind spot. A blind spot where the society has put or dragged this person and put it there. Because it was not Jesus. It was not God. It's us as a society who mark and who decide who should be on those blind spots. And this is a call today. And when Jesus turned around, and saw him and listened to him, he called him and say, come over, come here, come even closer. So not only I can see you, but others can see you as well. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and once he is in front of Jesus and, and Jesus asks the most beautiful question, what do you want me to do for you? What will be our reply? If Jesus is here asking me that question, and not only as an individual, but as a church, as an institution, as a society, what will be my reply? That is something to think because then, depending on our response, is how we're going to see those blind spots. 
And these uh, Bartimaeus, as I would have done it, he asked and say, let me see again. Which is telling me that probably he lost sight whenever he was growing up because he's saying again. So he remembered a world before. He remembered what it was in the back. And he came on the society and then he was turning to this blind spot on the side. But nobody could see him. Well, nobody cared. But now, he was in front of the person that he was offering to see through the front windshield, to see a future, a different path, to be able to take a different road if needed. And Jesus said, okay. And I can see Bartimaeus start feeling this anxiety to be able to be independent again, to be able to be reinstated in society, to be able to join what others were joining, you know, enjoying. And he wanted to be part of that because at the end, he is a human being that is part of a whole. So today, when we hear these words, we hear an invitation for us saying that God is telling us, what do you want me to do for you? And as Oakland United Methodist Church, we are saying, you know what, let me see again. And we are transforming ourselves into a new hub, into a new future, into a new vision. We are expanding our table of grace to make a space for all of those people that are being on the invisible spots. We have a Catholic a group that is coming to our church. We have Gracia Viva, a different language and a different culture that is enjoying to be in part of uh, Oakland. We have union. Young adults getting together, renewing the vision of the gospel in a different ways. And all of us, different as we are, but as unique as we are, loved by the only one God, getting together and enjoying the road together. And that is what God is envisioning for us. We know that 2020 is a perfect vision, right? But it didn't work so well this year. So we are in, invited today to turn ourselves, you know, to the sides and start looking for those who are on the blind spots, who are screaming, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And to not be part of that crowd that is silencing them. But instead, you know, as we heard in the story, those same people that it was silencing them, then that same people were the ones who told him like, hey, Jesus is calling you. Come over, you know, and they opened the path. But he's telling me that I, as a person, can change. When I hear the word of God. When I hear that Jesus is telling me that I am able to do it. That I am able to change. That I am able to transform myself. That I am able to see again with a new eyes. With a new love. With a new way. That is going to let me see a future in the front mirror because once that I am able to turn around and to be able to see those in the blind spots and put them together in the same car as a driver we all gonna drive safely and we are gonna look to the windshield looking at the front looking the guide the path line that God had prepared for us so today, Oakland, this is an invitation for all of us to not think that everything is being done 
and that we are diverse enough, we still have room. We still need to be looking to the sides and to be able to be hearing those voices and to see these people that are invisible still. And to prepare the way to the table, to prepare the path that is going to get them near Jesus so they can hear the words, what do you want me to do for you? But you will be the one preparing the way. So let us be that church. Let us be remembered by our name, Oak Lawn United Methodist Church, the diverse church, the courageous church, the entrepreneurial church, the expansive church, the inclusive church, Oak Lawn. So let us be working together towards the new future, towards the new vision, and let us be transformed. Because God left this miracle to be the last one before he went into his mission. And that is telling us something. That while he was preparing to complete his ultimate, ultimate um, way to tell us that he loved us, he left this illustration for us telling us that Yes, we can be near God and there will be some blind spots and we need to be aware of those voices and we need to be aware of that people so we can still hear them and see them in making a path near to God. So this is our call today, church. This is our invitation today to work together. And this last miracle is telling us that the vision can change when we ask God, let us see again. So, are you ready to have a new future? Are you ready to be inclusive even more? Are you ready to be the wonderful church that you are? Buckle up. Let us drive together. Amen. Good morning. Would you pray with me? God of healing and grace, thank you for drawing us together to worship this morning. We thank you for the joy of praying and singing and learning and growing into more faithful followers of Jesus. We thank you for the glorious days and cool nights that hint at changing seasons. We thank you for the people in our lives who teach us to love and remind us that we are loved. We thank you for those who work around the world for peace and justice. And we thank you for vaccines and new treatments that are bringing hope in the midst of a pandemic. God, forgive us when we are so blinded by resentment or fear or worry that we fail to see the small daily miracles that come to us in a compassionate act or a gentle word or in shared laughter. God, open our eyes to see the many ways that you are at work around us and within us. God, we pray this morning for all who have been devastated by storms in Louisiana and the Southeast. We pray, God, for our United Methodist friends who have lost lives and loved ones in the Congo. We pray for those who continue to suffer the effects of COVID-19. And we pray for those who bring healing and treatment, healthcare providers, caregivers, researchers. God, we pray for teachers and all who continue to do vital work in our communities. And we pray for those who are isolated from loved ones because of illness. We pray for those who have lost jobs and we pray for those who struggle daily with addiction and depression. 
God bring healing to all of us. And hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into a time of offering, will you pray with me? Generous God, mold us and shape us to be generous like you. Keep our eyes open, our ears ever attuned to the needs around us. May we steward our resources well to take care of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a quick reminder before we go, our membership class will start right after service at noon. You can join us on the Zoom link uh, in the comments in the video description or found on our digital bulletin at oumc.org slash worship. No need to RSVP. If you caught the spirit and you wanna join us, come on, we'll be ready for you. And now, after a beautiful message from Pastor Isabel this morning, receive this benediction. May this week, bring you new vision, to see what hasn't been done yet, to see those who have not been included yet, to see the new ways you can participate with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit for the work of the kingdom in the world. Amen.